Purification in itself demands resources. Biological treatment requires a long residence time and energy is consumed when air is blown into the sewage water. Consequently, the biological plant is big and more complex. The microorganisms have to be adapted to the pollution, which sensitizes the whole system. Chemical purification requires addition of coagulants, which is done in a small pool and at low energy consumption. The total energy used for chemical treatment is only 15% of that required for biological treatment, even if the energy used for production and the distribution of coagulants is included. There is also a difference in the total impact on the environment. In terms of the total ecological stress, the chemical process is favoured. Life cycle assessments show the biological process to be a larger consumer of resources and therefore it is more negative in terms of its entire environmental impact. If there is no need to remove dissolved organic matter, a biological purification process could do greater ecological damage than a chemical process due to the total energy consumption and the raw materials used when constructing the plant. The design of a treatment plant must be considered carefully. The environment makes demands on the purification process. And if advanced purification is necessary, both biological and chemical methods must be used. Unfortunately, legislation in many countries is based on standardized requirements on effluents. And there is no adjustment to ecology. The specific situation in the water is often neglected. In Norway, you find examples of adjustment to ecological prerequisites. Large quantities of wastewater are purified with chemical methods with excellent results. The removal of dissolved BOD would not enhance the environment in the fjords, and the increased energy consumption required by a biological process cannot be ecologically justified. In San Diego, California, all wastewater is purified chemically. The treatment plant at Point Loma is situated in a marine habitat with high ecological sensitivity. Many tourists visit this coastline yearly. We looked at a wide number of treatment options to use at Point Loma and we selected chemical treatment. Uh, the reasons for that are many, but most importantly, it protects the environment. We do a lot of monitoring off Point Loma to keep an eye on what's happening in the Pacific Ocean there. And we worked with scientists from the world-renowned Scripps Institution of Oceanography who made the determination that the chemical treatment did an excellent job protecting that ocean environment. We were able to take the existing primary Point Loma plant and without large capital expenditures we were able to make that a chemical treatment plant and we saved the citizens of San Diego about three billion dollars by doing that. Additionally it takes up less space so we didn't have to enlarge our Point Loma plant where we didn't have the room to do that and it's more cost effective to operate than a secondary treatment facility. In Oslo, Norway the existing chemical plant, built entirely within bedrock, was extended with a nitrogen removal system due to the increased nutrient load to the fjord. With a unique combination of chemical and biological processes, this plant occupies less than half the volume of a conventional biological process. We use a pre-precipitation technique to remove particles in the influent water to be able to operate a small and very effective biological process. This makes it possible for us to run a complete biological process with nitrogen removal on the same site, here within the mountain, as we did with only mechanical treatment. If we did not use chemicals on the influent water, we could not run a biological process here, and we would have to invest heavily in the construction of a new treatment plant. 
There are many examples how existing plants can easily be modified with the help of chemical precipitation. At Gdansk in Poland, a mechanical sewage treatment plant has been successfully completed this way. It has raised considerably its purification performance. In countries that invest in the environment and develop their own water purification, chemical precipitation gives the best improvement without expensive investment. In most circumstances, it is far more cost-effective to construct and run a chemical process than a biological plant. In Madrid, Spain, chemical purification has complemented the existing biological process. This has resulted in an improvement of the existing purification performance, giving energy savings and increased capacity of the plant. Chemical precipitation is the most resource-efficient way to remove particles and phosphorus. In Stockholm, Sweden, the biological process was complemented with a chemical one in the 70s. This made the bathing and fishing water of Stockholm a great tourist attraction. By using chemical precipitation, the city of Stockholm adjusted to what nature demanded, and nature gave back something for Stockholm to be proud of a pure good water.